God bless our brothers and sisters. So it's another another beautiful night to be able to worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. This is the important teaching for tonight because it deals with the challenges that we see today, the trouble that we see in our world today in regards to Christianity. Remember, all these videos are designed to bring light, you know, understanding, um, to bring awareness, to defend the gospel, to confirm it, um, you know, so people can know the truth and then they can make their choice. We don't want people to make their choice uh, based off of what false Christianity has portrayed, what they have taught, and, you know, what they have created, you know, or, you know, um, you know, created with commands and, and uh, you know, rules that they came up with. So we want people to know the truth, to be able to have an opportunity, you know, to choose Christ from the truth of the word, not from a fabricated uh, misrepresentation of the truth and of his word. So when you look at the world today, uh, Many people that are of status, many people that are known, many people that are not known, they don't have no desire, nor a want, nor a need, you know, uh, to become a Christian. This is where you get the new groups that you hear today uh, called the Hebrew Israelites, right? And when you look at the people that claim to be Hebrew Israelites, right? They twist up the Bible. They're confused. They're delusional. They have insanity. Like, they're not, you know, pursuing after righteousness at all. They curse, you know. They, they say mean things. They use corrupt communication. They go in the Bible and they find things and they try to twist it. They go much into the Old Testament. They completely reject much of the New Testament. You know, so they're just confrontational. You know, um, Paul said that some preach for envy and for strife. So you see these people who uh, claim to be, uh, you know, I don't even know what a Hebrew is like claims to be. You know, I guess the original Jews or whatever the case may be. But, the, you know, the Jews denied the faith. You know, many Jews today are still waiting for the Messiah. They don't believe that he came. So they're delusional, they're lost, they're confused, you know, they contradict the word of God, they 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 uh, use scriptures against each other, you know, they're just unstable, just a bunch of angry men, you know, that's just uh, sitting around and, and misusing the Bible, perverting the word of God. They do all this studying, they have a person read. They all got the same exact, uh, uh, I guess, preaching style. You know, one guy's holding the Bible, other one is okay. Go to the book of Isaiah twenty-three, and he said, and did to be to do to, and he did, you know, hold right there. Could go like it's the same thing. Like it's like robotic, you know. So that's how you know it's the same spirits. You know, the Bible talks about how Satan got ministers. You know, the devil comes as an angel of light and it says no great thing that his ministers, you know, you know, come and miss his righteousness, who ancient be to their destruction. So um, this is why you see so many of the extremist groups that's popping up today, because the truth hasn't been in this world, you know, for the last thousand years as far as genuine believers. So these people are going, you know, deliberately off of, um, they're going deliberately off of what um, 
you know, they seen. And if there's no one that's here to stand on the truth of God's word, then it's easy for people to bring in things that's not true, uh, create things that's not real, you know, invent things, you know, come up with things, say things, because there's no one, there hasn't been anyone truthfully in the last thousand of years to oppose you know, the truth of, um, you know, to oppose uh, with the truth against these lies and the falsehood. Boo. Boo. There's no one that's been able to, um, there's no one that's really, that has been here to stand up against um, the unrighteousness of these false religions and these false churches and all the different things that uh, they have taught. So it grown, you know, these churches, these false churches have grown, the dominations have grown, you know, they're, they're powerful, you know, they're big, you know, um, they have successful uh, ministries and different things like that. So, uh, boom! You know, they have um, successful ministries and, you know, they're bringing a lot of income, they're bringing a lot of finances. Because there's, there hasn't been anyone truthfully here to oppose them, to be able to stand against, you know, what they're doing, you know, with the power of God as well to back them and support them, the, the ones who are truly sent from God. So now the Bible talks about how judgment starts in the house of God. And since they're claiming to be of God, the same way it was in Revelation, the Church of Philadelphia, the other church that was rebuked, since they're claiming to be Christians, then they have to receive the same rebuke, right? They have to receive chastisement because they're claiming things that are biblical. They're claiming things that's in the Bible. They're claiming things that, um, you know, a true Christian will claim. So they're going to you know, receive everything the Bible says, you know, that they should receive when it comes to rebukes and correction. So it doesn't matter because they're false or they're fake, you know, it's an opportunity for them to repent, to humble themselves, you know, and turn to God. Hold on real quick. I need the phone, boy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, when we look at what's taking place today, and you look at what's going on, the unbelievers who don't, you know, portray to be believers or portray to be Christians, they don't have any desire to become a believer. They don't have any desire to come to Christ because the way that the false Christians are representing God, they're representing him in such a way that is not appealing it's not, you know, uh, persuasive. It's not, you know, there's not anything that a person can benefit from. Because these people are the same people that are saying that, um, you know, they're struggling with sin. They're trying to, you know, work on themselves. And let me try to see if I can. They're the same people. The same okay, there we go. Okay, so these people are saying how they're struggling with sin, you know, how they're they're being attacked, how they you know they're they're going through so many different things. When you look at what's being preached today, and you look at you know what these churches, these false churches stand for, there's no reason for these people who have no belief to come to believe in what these preachers are preaching and what they're teaching. Because when you hear them say, I'm, I'm not where I need to be, but I'm not where I need to be. When they're saying that no one's going to be perfect. When they're saying 
So they're making it into like a psychological type of like warfare to where like they want you to claim something, you know, to make you feel good, but without the benefits that come with it, right? So that's why people look at it today and they're like, well, why not become a Muslim? You know, and a lot of African Americans, you know, they'll gravitate towards Islam. It's like a ghetto Christianity, right? And a lot of African Americans now too are gravitating toward the whole Hebrew Israelite movement because that's just ghetto wicked. I mean, you know, that's just is worse than Islam, right? So these are wicked people, you know, and Satan is in these people. So he has to use these people to try to pervert the Bible, try to gain followers, to pull them away from the truth because he knows that the Spirit of God is going to be sent in genuine believers. It's going to be given to, you know, sent inside of genuine believers. And they're going to reprove the word of sin, as the Bible says the Holy Spirit will do. So, Satan knows, right? Because it's written that God is going to send those prophets and they're going to prophesy and, you know, they're going to convict the world. So, he knows. So he'll he'll move in these people, giving them visions, giving them dreams, speaking in their mind, using Bible verses, misquoting it, you know, misinterpreting it, you know, feeding off of people's fleshly desires. He'll be telling them that, you know, you're a prophet, you know, I'm going to use you, you know, he might put the spirit of witchcraft in them and they might be able to do certain things, you know, make people fall down and stuff like that, whatever the case may be. So... He'll raise these people so he can get these people to get to gather mass of the people to follow them. So when the true power of God hits this earth in a ministry in a true living church, and the spirit of God is truly in, you know, true men of God, he has these people that's already here. So they're going to oppose the truth. They're going to fight against it. They're going to be saying, oh, these things aren't right, whatever. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about the true ones that's going to have a true living church. You know, he can't stop it. He just wants to be able to have people fight against it, not accept it, reject it, you know, uh, deceive more people. The Bible says he's a liar, you know, the father of lies, a deceiver. So he just wants to deceive more people. And that's why he creates the false churches. He makes it to where... You know, these people create these false religions and these false beliefs. You know, Hebrew was like, you know, all this stuff is false. You know, there's something they stand like, they, the stuff they believe can be destroyed in five minutes. They're not going to let you talk because they don't believe. So it don't matter what you show about how the Bible said, you know, Jew or Greek, bond or free, we all want in Christ Jesus. They don't care. They're not believers. So you can't show them the Bible. They just chose to take the Bible and use it. To strengthen their delusion and their insanity and their pride. So you can show them all the scriptures in the New Testament. How Christ died for all. You know, how the Jews were, were, uh, were, 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 were you know, the Bible said how the kingdom, the children of the kingdom are kingdom going to come. And said children are going to be casted out, you know, of the kingdom. You know, so you see so many things where it talks about how, you know, the Gentiles were grafted in. You know, and um, uh, they didn't believe that their heart was hardening, you know, many different things like that. And you see all through where it talks about how, um, you know, uh, God loved the whole world, you know, that, um, you know, whoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Like Paul talks about how we're not under the law anymore, you know, we're under grace. So they'll go back to the New Testament and say, well, Jesus said I didn't come to abolish the law. They don't understand it. They're just being used by the devil to be able to go and get scriptures and, and uh, use it to support their delusion. So even though Jesus did say I didn't come to destroy it, I didn't come to, to, to abolish the law, right? He's saying at the time that he was on this earth, he had to fulfill what was written. That was the whole purpose. That's why he came and died. What was written in the law? A sacrifice had to take place, right? So why did he die? You got to understand the deepness of everything. You can't just sit here and say, oh, he said he didn't come to abolish the law. That's true. But it's done away with now. Remember, everything in the Old Testament is not the law, okay? 
When you read about Isaiah and you read about the prophets, you read about me, these aren't the law. The laws were with Moses. Even the Ten Commandments is not the law. The Ten Commandments came before the law. Okay? So, like, people don't understand. That's why Paul said the Spirit searches everything, the deep things of God. But when you don't have the Spirit, you don't have understanding. You don't get it. You'll see him say, I didn't come to, but he, he said it was finished. What was finished? Fulfilling the law. That's what he said what was finished. So he said it's done. It's finished. Because he fulfilled the law. He did every, if you read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he fulfilled it. He did everything that the law said to do. And he also died. And the Bible say, took out the old way, bring in a new way. He said the old way was flawless, then why would there be a need for a new one? So you can tell them all this stuff that I'm saying right now. They don't want to hear it. They're not here to live. They don't even follow Jesus like that. They like they talk about like they're just Jews and like they this how this how Jews don't confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The same way. You see? They don't they curse, they 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 they're angry, they're upset, they're not trying to be like Christ. The Bible is the standard for life. It's the blueprint to even know how to impregnate a woman, right? Before a man even knew where to put his penis in a woman's vagina, the Bible told you. The Bible explained everything, how we got here. So every nation, every country, every religion takes from the Bible. Our, our life is built off of it. Everything that we understand and we know, even in Job, there's secrets in there. It talks about how, you know, Isaiah talk about how the world is round. Chris Columbus couldn't have been reading Isaiah because he said that he thought the world was flat, right? So if he would have read Isaiah in the 40th chapter, he would have seen that the Bible said that God sits on what? The circle, right, of the earth, the world. So he wasn't reading it. So you see the answer has always been in there. These people are non-believers. So you can't talk to a Hebrew Israelite. What in the world is that? Right? Where in the Bible do they say you're going to be called this? Where in the Bible can they support in the New Testament or in the Old Testament what they're claiming today? They're going to go and pull all these verses and anybody can. I, I had people who don't even believe in God that will bring up verses. They're trying to contradict the Bible. They're trying to, like, we, that, that's a heretic. So we know that they talked about that in Titus in the third chapter. So they're going to do that. You can't try to speak Bible to people who don't believe. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are saved, it's the power of God. They don't want to hear. You know? So this is what they say. This is, this is how we understand. Jesus talked about the Jews and the Greek. How both of them, you know, in their nature, they require certain things. You know, whether it's a sign, whether it's a miracle, you know, this is who they are. So you can't reason with these people because they're not logical. They're, 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 whatever they're claiming is not biblical and it's not built off of scripture. They're just pulling out stuff. They're angry. They're dressing in these funny looking shirts and little, you know, they're cut at the end. They're angry on the side of the corner. They're talking about the, the war. America is Babylon and, you know, we'll, Nebuchadnezzar and, you know, what, who was this and what was the king like? They don't even know what they're even talking about. Where do they come from? This is something that's new. This is something that just came up. They can't look in the scripture and see anybody that was saying Hebrew is like and was speaking what they speak. And they're taking scriptures and making it to fit their own philosophy of what they want to believe and what they stand for. There's no biblical patriot that came before these people that are talking what they're talking. They're going throughout different scriptures in the Bible. To, to try to make their point. There's no Abraham. I, they cannot go to one person that was a Hebrew Israelite that spoke what they're speaking. They go all around the Bible. But I can go and show you where they preach the gospel. One person, Paul, one person, Peter, where they preach the gospel, where they said the same thing. He can't do that. He's going to go to Isaiah the prophet. He can go to another prophet. They're going to go to somewhere in Moses. They can go to some Deuteronomy. They're going to go to Old Testament stuff. They completely reject the New Testament. They don't even be touching on Roman and stuff, Romans and stuff like that, because that kind of, it goes against all that stuff that they're talking about. But anyway, so we don't even have conversations with them. I won't even answer a messenger or a phone call or anything, you know, because 
they're not believers. So what? That's just like me having a conversation, you know, with a, 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 a atheist. The word of God, faith comes by hearing him by the word of God. We're not trying to prove truth. We're not trying to prove to people that God is real. That's not the way it works. Either you believe or you don't believe. That's not going to take. That's not going to remove him from who he is. That's not going to take him off the throne. He's still God. You can't tell me who made this world. You can't even explain it. The only book that tells you, you reject it. Because you find pleasure in sin. So we're not, we're not entertaining foolishness. Right? These people are lost. They're delusional. They're the blind leading the blind. The Bible already told us about Hebrews lights. The Bible already told us about Muslims. The Bible already prophesied about these things are going to come. They're going to be killing you. They're doing the act for God. What have you seen the, the people do in, in other countries? Claiming to do it in the name of God kill you in the name of God right the Bible already prophesied that so like once you're a believer you're not you don't even pay attention to that stuff right you become numb to that stuff like you don't even pay attention because you know they're lost they're, it's contradictory they cannot nothing that they stand on can be proven it's falsehood it's all designed by the devil they're full of darkness they're full of demons that's why they talk like that they talk like the rest of the world they're not different you know a true Christian is different because he is one who lives righteously, talks righteously, and moves righteously, and stand for righteousness the way God has always did. So everybody can make this talk about who's the true God, who's this God, and who's the real God, Allah, this or that. But one thing we know about God, because we can look at every human being, that the God that made us is righteous because everybody has a conscience in them, and they all know right from wrong. And many people in the world agree with righteousness more than unrighteousness, right? Forms of it. People are, there are more people that are law abiding than there are people that's in prison throughout the whole world. You have 8 billion people today in this world. How many are in prison around the whole earth? How many are free around the whole earth? How many people have never been in jail, never been to prison, never uh, got a felony or a misdemeanor? So that's people that have chose to live and obey the government and obey the laws, right? And not break the law. You got many, many people who have not broke the law because consciously they agree. There's no way that there's no other religion. There's no other religion that speaks righteousness. Hebrews like they're not righteous. Muslims are not righteous. Buddha not righteous. They're all worldly, worshiping these false gods. But a true Christian is one who lives like the Creator, right? Because when you look at who God is through the word, through the love, the patience, the things he gave us, right? His nature, it was all love and righteousness. So you know that Christianity is the truth. And because of the power, because no man can do these things without the creator power. Only the creator can heal his creation. Only the creator can make what he wants to crook it straight. Only the creator can do that. That's why no other religion, they talk of power. Because there is no power, it's made up. True Christianity, you see miracles, signs, one deliverances, healings, prophecies, because it's coming from the Creator that's working in the lives of these genuine believers. That's the way it works. So you see, that's the beauty of living for God. So, let's look at the title that I wrote. My phone is frozen, so I gotta use Courtney's phone. Because of false Christianity and them being worldly and have greatly misrepresented God, this is the reason why many don't want to be a Christian today. And many have started other false religions and have false beliefs, which contradicts the word of God. So what that means is that people have looked at those today who claim to be Christians and they're confused. They don't understand. They, they're, they're equal to them. So they're searching for the truth. And a lot of them are creating what they feel are genuine and authentic um, beliefs because of what they, um, because of questions not being answered. Like I have met people who have told me, have asked me questions that nobody before could answer for them. It was about the Bible. Because the people that they asked before didn't have the Holy Spirit. So they couldn't answer, right? But Paul said we explain spiritual with spiritual. 
So remember when P Stephen was talking, they couldn't resist the, the, the wisdom and spirit which he spoke, right? So there was, even Jesus, the Bible said they stopped asking him questions. No man dared to ask him a question anymore, right? They seen that they couldn't prevail. He was wiser than wise, right? He knew the word. He is the word. So they didn't play around with him anymore. The Bible talks about how you're supposed to be able to convince the gainsayers, right? So these are people who are filled with the spirit. There's no way that unrighteousness can beat righteousness. There's no way that lies can beat the truth. So we're never going to be overpowered by anyone that comes in Muslims, uh, Hebrew Israelites, you know, whoever. We will never be false religion, false Christianity. We will never be overpowered because the truth is here. It don't matter how big something is, how powerful the ministries are, how big they are, reputation. One thing that they can't, they can't beat and defeat is the truth. Okay? So it doesn't matter. The truth is the truth. Women can't preach. That's in the Bible. It don't matter how they want to argue it. They're going to live out their life believing whatever they want to believe. But they will receive no mercy when they die and go before God. Because it's written in the word. And it's also being spoken to them. And they rejected it. That's the reality. They'll receive no mercy. Because the opportunity chance was given to them and they rejected it. So they, they have no excuse. That's why the Bible said that the wicked is reserved to the day of redemption, right? And tribulation angels upon every man so done evil. And the Bible said his wrath will be poured out of those who hold the truth and unrighteousness, right? Who know what the Bible say, but still doing the opposite. They can't tell me that what I'm saying is not true. But what they saying is true is, is false. It's not true. They can't show me where a Christian took tithes and offerings. Don't show me in 2 Corinthians about... Uh, uh, God was a cheerful giver That don't say nothing about tithes and offerings That wasn't even about tithes and offerings right? You got to read chapter 7, 8, and 9 2 Corinthians to know why they said that in chapter 9 So all that little sneaky stuff And oh the church of Corinthians Was out of control He rebuked the Galatians He rebuked many churches You know, They wasn't out of control They had a few things going on There was a big church And he was dealing with those matters The same way he did with matters in Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians Everywhere, Thessalonians he dealt with things that came up. Everybody wasn't filled with the spirit. Everybody wasn't truly serious. But they were trying to part. Was Ananias serious? Was Ananias serious? Was Demas serious? Then why did Demas forsake him? Go back to the world. Why did Ananias lie about the money, the property that they sold? So were they serious? Was Simon the sorcerer serious? The Bible said he believed and was baptized. But he still wanted to buy the Holy Spirit. So what, is, what about when Jesus talks about the seed and the sower, how it falls on the wayside, falls on the thorns, falls on the, you know, the good ground and, and, and everything else. So you see it's a difference that is uh, when the word is, is preached or people hear the word, you know, there's things that come in to choke it up, you know, take it away or whatever the case. You got to read about the seed and the sower in the book of Matthew. It'll, it'll bless you to understand, you know, it's an opportunity and it's a choice. Okay. So. One thing about the truth, it don't matter what people want to say. It don't matter how they want to argue, how they want to fight. I was talking to a sister earlier, and she, we was talking about her dad. And she was saying that ever since she brought the truth to her dad, he always gets so mad and so angry. You know, and I said, well, that's who he is. I said, see, the thing about life is this. Is that you look at these YouTubers, look at all these people that always seem so happy, that's living in darkness. That's because they're enjoying their life. Satan's not messing with these people. He's allowing them to live and, and hopefully they, he's waiting for the grace to fail over their life. And, and, and God removed the grace. He's going to take them out. He's all, he already been trying to take them out with heart attacks, sicknesses, cancers, everything. Right, but it's not their time to go. Satan doesn't know that. Him and God ain't communicating up there. God ain't. Hey, hey, Lucifer. They just see. Okay, this person not protected. I'm gonna try to kill him. They try, but God said, nope. You know, you can't have his life. And the person get better. Got the hospital. They come back. They think it's God that did it. You know. Well, I mean, God did play a role. He didn't let Satan take you out, but it wasn't God. Like, oh, God performed his miracle over me. Like, you don't get attacked by these. We protect it. The Word of God tells you that. Gene believers. So anyway, what happens is, is that people will experience all these things, right? They'll, they'll be able to live their life and enjoy it. And then when they're not able to do what they love or their routine is messed up, 
right? She said one time that he was going to church and she was out doing something and her kids were at the house. And the mom, which is her mother, had to stay home with the kids. But he, the dad wanted the mom to come with him to church. So uh, the mom, I guess the, 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 the sister I'm telling you about, she noticed that the dad was acting different, I guess the next day or, or a day or two later. So she was asking the mom, like, what's, like, what's wrong with dad? Cause I guess he didn't say anything to her. And the mom was like, you know, your dad was mad because, you know, you, used to, you know, he wanted to take me to church, but the mom don't even want to go to church. She ain't even, like, the mom doesn't even like church. So anyway, so let me just show you how it works. So the dad finally, I think, either called her or texted her. I can't remember. I don't want to lie. But he was like, don't you ever do that again. If you ever, you know, do this do that, I'm never going to help you again. You know, basically like saying like she's going to be done. Now, a Christian man who's saying they love God, who was told to forgive, who was told to be patient, you know, support the weak, comfort the people minded, be patient towards all men. It says in Galatians 6 and 1, if any man is, if he was, if any man is caught in the fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such a one with spirit of meekness, right? Consider thyself that thyself be tempted. Why would he be so angry? Because he's not a true Christian. Think about it. They don't even be in love with God for real to get that mad. They only get that mad because that's who they are. And the things that they're doing is what is helping suppress those things. Like a lot of people smoke weed. A lot of people drink. A lot of people play games. You know, to channel, you know, uh, to channel their anger and, you know, their emotions, you know, from, um, to channel their anger and their emotions. So they do different things to help them. When you take away that Xbox, I remember a rapper said that if he had to go to jail for 20 years, he said, as long as I can take my Xbox with me, I'm good. So that's something that he loves. They said it, it was a, a rapper was saying that, he went on tour and they didn't have Wi-Fi, you know, at the hotel. So he didn't want to go to do the show because they didn't have Wi-Fi, I guess, in that part of the world that he was at. Somewhere over in the, in the overseas, they didn't have Wi-Fi. So he said that he, basically he, his manager said he didn't want to do the show because he didn't have Wi-Fi. The things that he loved would have been disturbed and he wouldn't have been able to have that joy and that peace, that temporary joy and peace. So you see the same thing with the stepfather. He found something that helps numb, I mean, helps channel his anger and his frustration. But even the mom have, she said, have choked the son and called him names, but she's a Sunday school teacher. You know, called him the fat A word and choked him and you know, all different type of stuff. But they are, she's a Sunday school teacher. And the dad drives it to church van. So just look at this stuff that, 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 that's, that's been told to me. And these are actual people, right? And they're claiming to be Christians. So if she was trying to be a believer, look at how the mom and dad represent themselves. The mom drank, you know, smoked, you know, cigarettes behind the dad's back. The dad be watching wild westerns and, you know, getting angry and upset, you know, and different things like that. So you see, long as people's lives are not disturbed, that's why I like them going to church on Sunday, the false churches, and paying that money and being told that everything is well, they gonna seem like the most nicest people. But take away, I have shown people who pay tithes and offerings that it's not biblical to pay tithes and offerings. They still do it. They still do it. Even though there's, there's proof that we, don't, we didn't pay tithes and offerings. We're not supposed to do it. There's proof. They still do it. They don't care. It's not about shame and proof because they're not believers. They're just doing something that gives them comfort and joy. That's why the dad flipped out like that. He gets angry like that because that's his comfort place. He's in a delusion. He's believing that he's truly a Christian and truly saved. But then once she challenged what he believes, like they had to talk about the rapture, he was screaming and yelling and getting all angry, calling her crazy. She told him about Christmas and celebrating holidays and trees. He started talking about she's crazy. The mom called her a freak, called her daughter a freak, you know, but they're saying they're Christians though. So you see the point that I'm trying to make, brothers and sisters. The video I made yesterday, I told you how we're supposed to speak, how we're supposed to talk. So you see these people are not believers. But this is what the world sees. These ain't just the only people. The world sees the same behavior. 
So they don't have a need to want to come. They don't. These people are not preaching about miracle signs and wonders. They're believing a miracle is receiving money, receiving a house. Listen to most of these gospel songs. They're talking about receiving financial help. They're talking about receiving. If you listen to a lot of this, like a lot of their testimonies, it's always about oh, we had to live in a hotel room. We had to this. We had to do that. We was you know it was this and that going on. What what liberated them? Money, not the word of God. They was miserable in their in their life when they were going through what they were going through. What liberated them? The money liberated them. The money freed them. The money bought them happiness. Right? Someone came in and blessed them, and they say, "Oh, that was God. God did it." So you listen to a lot of these gospel songs. They're not telling you how no matter what. I love Jesus. This is what they're telling you. Like people did me wrong. It's kind of like the same. It's, it's if you listen. If you listen to teaching I did yesterday about the lyrics of the song, it's the same thing. They all talk about like this person did me wrong. You know, I was so hurt. I was affected. They shouldn't have done those things. But I gotta trust you, Jesus. I got like it's always. It's like okay, what you say? You talking to me? Oh what? What? Don't talk to me like that. We know what? I'm a Christian. I'm saved. It's like they get it off on you and then they hit the switch. Like, y'all see that? Like, even in the songs and even in the lyrics that I posted yesterday, it's like they all do the same thing. Like, they'll, the, the pastors will, will, will they, they, they apologize so much. Like, when did you ever see Christians apologize for just doing and saying wrong things? Like, they'll get up there and start talking about, like, I remember this guy, uh, this guy uh, passed away. Right, his name was like Kevin Samuels. Right, he passed away. A so-called pastor got up there and was talking about him not being able to pay for his funeral. Right, he was wrong. Right, and then he had to apologize about that. So you see what I'm trying to say? Like they they do that a lot. A lot of those people that claim to be pastors, they be apologetic. They be apologizing because they be saying stuff from their mouth. They're worldly, but they're trying to portray this image. And they be out here apologizing for saying things, saying things on in front of their congregation, you know, crazy stuff. I remember a, a pastor had died, a, a, a prophet died in Africa, and people like it's it was so called pastors speaking evil about him, like saying God, you know, the devil, like 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 who would speak evil? The Bible says speak evil of no man. Even David knew that he couldn't touch God's anointed, King Saul. These people don't have the same heart as David. They're not of our kind. They're not our brothers. They're worldly. Only the world is that grimy and that vicious and that evil. That when a man died who got a wife and got children and got loved ones, you're, you're, you're going before your church talking about, you know, that's good he died. And, you know, I, I'm not coming to a funeral. I'm not sending condolences. You are the devil in disguise. That's the reality. The devil in the flesh. You know? You know? So, like, how can these people claim to be Christians? So the world sees that. The world sees the division. You know, the, the unbelievers can ride down any street, and these churches got different names. How do they know which one to choose? See, it's already placing you to be divided. It's already setting you up to choose a side. You ride down the street, there's five churches. And they all got different names, different denominations and different beliefs. But it's only one Bible and only one church name. It's only one Lord and one God and one spirit. But when you ride down the street, there's five different churches with different names. Different denominations. Different traditions and rules and commands. Different dress code policies. So how does an unbeliever know where to go when it's all different? It's all different. There's no unity. They left the world. They're in the world right now where there's wickedness, dysfunction, chaos. You know, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You know, steal, kill, and destroy. Right? All this stuff is in the world. And then they come into these false churches and they're still divided. These churches don't talk. They don't be communicating to each other like that. You got five churches on one street. They all got different names. And when they let out when they let out the services, everybody get in their car and they go home. They don't meet at a park and all fellowship and say, "Hey, service was so great. I, I thank you for being a believer or being a Christian." 
You could be in Walmart right now, and Walmart could have 300 people in there. Out of 300 people, 250 people claim to be Christians in there. Can you tell? They ain't talking to you. Nobody's greeting no one. Nobody's saying God bless you. Nothing. I always say, like, I'm blessed or, you know, have a blessed day or, like, God bless you. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Like, but before I said that, you never would have known the person was a Christian, claim, claim to be a Christian. You never would have known because they don't even talk like it. They don't even greet you as a believer. We have a certain greeting as a Christian. People don't even know what I'm saying right now because they're not Christians. Like a greeting. Yeah, it's in the Bible how we're supposed to greet one another. It's in the Bible. They don't like people be like, what is he talking about? You see? Because what we've seen in the last thousand years is not Christianity. That's why the things that I'm speaking it seem in left field, but it's not. It's biblical. This is the problem that we have. You see? So unbelievers don't see a need to come because of what they see today that's been falsely portrayed as Christianity. You're in the same doctor's office as them. You're angry just like them. You're getting caught on phone calls, cursing out people and cursing out. You're no different. You, you, there's no power in your churches. There's no power in your churches. Right? There's no power in the churches. So they don't see a need to come. There's nothing that, that will bring them because they don't have anything to gain. They're going to be the same way. Some people are not as gullible. Everybody is not as gullible as these false Christians to just come and be like, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. My life is better. But you in service, you at church every Sunday and the preacher is showing you how your life is not better. Because he's always telling you that things are going to get better. God going to do something for you. If, if you had, if you, the Bible say that when you have entered to God rest, Right? Those who enter to God's rest, why would you still be waiting for something for God to do? Right? That if you enter into God's rest, right? Why do you need to be encouraged? Why do you need to be told that things are going to work out? You're going to overcome that devil. You're going to overcome those demons. The demon that you're wrestling with. That anxiety that you're wrestling with. Be free from this. Be free from that. Break every chain. You're still the same person. You're just delusionally believing in something that has no power involved. That's why they constantly preaching them happy-go-lucky messages every Sunday. That's why they're doing that. Because they're going through that. They just, as long as you keep bringing that money in there. Y'all can't, the pastor don't even know some people that's in their church. You can't even walk up to the pastor. You can't, you can't walk up to some of the mega church pastors. Try it. If you go to one of those mega churches and get out your seat to go and shake his hand, them armor bearers will break your arm. To take go back to your seat. You can't even shake your pastor's hand. And you're thinking that I'm just saying something that's not true. But Jesus Christ received everybody. You gotta have an appointment to meet the pastor. They're celebrities, brothers and sisters. They're celebrities. They're celebrities. Only celebrities move that way. Only celebrities gotta have security guard. The Lord didn't handle no security guard. When they came to arrest him, who who prevented them? And when Peter grabbed his sword, he even told Peter not to do that. Right? He didn't have no security guards with him. People was able to touch him. He had to go on the boat because it was that many people that was around him to preach to them. So you see, that's the reality. What we see today is not Christianity. That's why the people who don't claim to be of any faith or belief, they're, they're not coming. Because of these people who falsely misrepresented God. But when this last day church rises up, and they see the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the power, the prophecy. When we teach them how lust operates, when we teach them why they broke up, why they, they, they got the feeling they feel towards their companion, why the, their companion wants to go through divorce. When we show them that Satan is behind it, when we prophesy, when we tell them how the demons are operating in their life, when we tell them the, sna the, the snares and the traps. What did Paul say? We're not ignorant, Satan. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. When we give them wisdom and knowledge and spiritual guidance, right? Helping them to understand, teach them the word, you know, teach them what the Bible say, helping them to grow more in God to receive grace. When we show them that, right, they, these people are going to see the need. When we when they see the, the people coming being delivered from 
cancer, AIDS, diabetes, being blind, homosexual, whatever. When they see these things, they're going to see a need to come. They're going to know that it was through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, right? They're going to know that it was through God, the Father, the Creator. So they're going to see a need. But as long as you're just telling them, oh, it's going to get better, things going to work, so is so is our talk show host. You got Dr. Phil's, you got all type of people that's out there that's encouraging people to just keep going. You got motivational speakers that's telling people, you got to dig deep, you got to fight. You got to keep going. Ray Lewis says, you got these people that's motivational speakers. So what's the difference? So your, your, your false pastor is no different than a Ray Lewis or a motivational speaker because that's what everybody is doing, just motivating you to, for you to take your mind off of what's going on and to just keep moving forward. That's all they're doing. Motivational speakers. That's it. Okay? So the, unbel the unbelievers, they don't see a need to come. They're like, why do I need to come? There's nothing that's going to change. And you know nothing is changing in your life. That's why you every day, you know, saying you're praying. That's why you're asking people on Facebook to keep you up, lifted up in prayer. You can't even go to God because you're not of God. The Bible say. His eyes are over the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who does evil. The Bible says, whatever you ask, you shall receive. So why are you not receiving what you're asking for? It's been eight years, ten months, nine months. You've been praying for the same thing and no answer. Then you start saying, well, God going to work through the doctor. you just all messed up. God got to work through a man. But he didn't work through anyone when he made this world. He didn't work through nobody when he made you. He formed you from the dust. He didn't work through no man for nothing. He did it from himself. When he walked this earth, Jesus walked this earth and performed the miracles and wonders, he didn't work through no man. No one that got healed by him went through a doctor or a hospital or a physician. No one. You have people that went to doctors and didn't get better. And they came to him for the last resort. That was the last resort. So he never said, okay, go to that doctor. You're not following Jesus. You don't believe in Jesus. They built, they, I'm telling you, they took, they took things out the Bible and built falsehood. They built lies. They built a whole city <coughs> made out of cardboard. It will not stand the test of time. Cardboard is not water resistant, nor water repellent. Nor can it stand up against wind, <laughs> weather, the elements. They can't. <laughs> so this is why people don't want to become Christians today. Because they don't see the need to become one. These false Christians are the same as unbelievers. Y'all watch the same movies. Y'all shop in the same stores. They don't see nothing that is unique about you. Nothing that is wonderful about you. There's no unity in these false churches today. They're all divided. They're all separated. They all got different names. So they don't see the need. You're no different than them. You got Crips, you got Bloods, you got Vice, you got GDs, you got Biker Gangs. You got the Hell's Angels, you got this, you got that. Like, they don't see no difference. You're the same as the rest of the world. They don't see the false Christians any different than Muslims. That's why a person who don't have faith, they'll say that Muslim and Christians are the same. They'll say that. You know why they say that? Because they don't see anything that makes you different than the other one. They always say Allah is God. You know why? Because they don't see any difference in what you're preaching and what the the, the Muslim iman is, is saying. They don't see no difference. So there's nothing that is making them to see it. That's why when an unbeliever looks from the outside looking in, they don't they don't see no difference. That's why people are like, oh, I, be I, 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 I believe in Buddhism. I believe in God. I believe in Allah. You know, I do a little Hindu. Like, I, I have met people that, like, said they believe in, like, all the stuff. You know why? Because there's no difference. And the false Christianity, the Muslims, the Buddhism, they're all trying to say, be your best, do this, do that. But there's no power. That's why people, they, they'll they gravitate to all of them. 
they'll gravitate to all of them. Right? Because they can, there's no difference. So when you look at a Muslim guy, he's not up there like, hey, go kill people. You look at a Muslim guy, he's like, hey, go kill people. You look at a false Christian, like, hey, no, go. So they see the same. But the difference of true Christianity is the power and righteousness. False Christians can't live righteously. That's why they tell you they, 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 they sin, they're not perfect. They can't be. They're, they're worldly. You can only be righteous. You can only be perfect by having a spirit. By having a perfect spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. That's the only way. By having the grace of God over you, by having the spirit of God, or being the will of God, you have protection. Without that, demons are going to attack you. They're going to afflict you. You're going to be attacked with sicknesses. So they go through all this stuff. That's why they don't believe in the power of God. Many don't. Many that claim to be false Christians don't believe in the power of God. They believe in what they believe is God's power. And that's working through doctors. That's, you know, getting better, you know, after months or years of dealing with stuff. They say, oh, that's God. Because that's what they believe. That's what they came up with. They don't see it. They'll, they'll go in the Bible and be like, oh, if you think about this. The way Hebrew Israelites misrepresent the Bible, misinterpret it, it's the same way false Christians do as well. A false Christian will go in the Bible and say that Paul had a demon in him. A Hebrew like will say that we're still under the law. Even though it clearly says we're under the law. Even though Paul told you that we can't have fellowship with devils. Even though Paul told you that when you're joined to the Lord, you're one spirit. So a demon is a spirit, right? And Paul wrote in Corinthians that you, when you're joined to the Lord, you're one spirit. So you can't have... A demon in you and have the spirit, and you can't cast out demons with what with having demons in you. Matthew twelve, it, it told you that. So you see, like these people, they they look at these scriptures, and because it makes them feel good, because they got demons in them, they're not looking for truth. They're looking for a verse that they can use to pervert it and to give them comfort. The same way the Hebrew people are doing. There's the Hebrews like people are doing. It's the same thing. You can show them the truth. They're not looking for truth. They're going to just keep on searching. The Bible was written in such a unique way that anyone who is not, who doesn't have the spirit, or anyone that's not got someone who, who is spiritual, you can you can misinterpret it. You can believe whatever you want to believe and think whatever you want to think, and, and many different things because they don't have the spirit. They can the, the, remember it's Satan inside them, so he can twist up what they're seeing. That's why they say that Paul was only talking to the Corinthians about women not being able to preach. Right, but they won't look at how every epistle, even through Peter, James, and John, was addressed to men as well. Forget what Paul said, right? What about how the other apostles didn't write to women either? It was always addressed to men. What about when they talked about a bishop and a deacon? They said they had to be the husband of one wife, and it said that you know he, you know, so they never mentioned women. So you can take out Paul. What about the other epistles that were written by other men outside of being Paul? What about how Peter told you how they pervert Paul's uh, scriptures, how they twist it up? How come you only hear Paul had a demon, Paul was sick, Paul was this, Paul was that? You don't hear nothing else about Peter, James. So we have a prophetic word that was given to us, and we see it as clear as day today, and people still don't believe. The only controversy you ever hear is about Paul. Paul said he sinned in Romans 7. Paul said that he, he lives in the flesh. Paul said he's a chief sinner. This brother's talking past tense and they're thinking that he saying he's a chief sinner now. If that's the case, he could never preach. He'll be a hypocrite. Like, you see, so they're not, like, listen to what I'm saying. We're not going to get into, because I already preached on these things in the past. We're not going to get into that. But listen to what I'm saying, brothers. Are y'all following me? Listen to what I'm saying. How can he be a sinner and rebuke a sinner? He'll be a hypocrite. Jesus specifically, and Paul even talked about not being a hypocrite. How can he say that? How can he say, don't be a hypocrite and he's one? You see what I'm saying? Like, they don't care. That's why the word of God is for those who receive by faith. Those who hear it and say, okay, I believe. It's not to try to convince and, 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 and force a person to believe it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The brother's sitting here showing you that you can't do this, you can't do that. So but you believe that he can live in sin. You are ignorant and foolish. That's foolishness. When the brother's sitting here telling you that in time past he was once this way. When he sat there and said that the when anyone is in the spirit, right? He said the flesh is crucified less than the flesh. He said in Romans 6 that he was dead to sin. 
Then the next chapter, he said that he was talking. He said, I talk to those who know the law. He didn't mention Jesus Christ not one time or the gospel. He said the law of God. That's the Old Testament. He clearly. So you see what I'm saying? They don't care. They're not looking to see the truth. They're looking to give themselves comfort in their false belief. They don't care that Paul said those things. They don't care other places that Paul said he wasn't a sinner. They don't care that Paul said, don't let, let, not, not let it once be named amongst you as become of saints. They don't care about that. They don't care that Paul kicked the man out of the church for sleeping with his father's wife. They don't care. They don't care that Paul never mentioned any sin he committed. But it mentioned that guy's sins. It mentioned David's sins. It mentioned this person's sins, that person's sins. Well, what's God? If God never, if he's not a respecter of a person, as the Bible say, that means he doesn't have no favorites. Right? If you wrong, you wrong. It's been that way all through the Old Testament and New Testament. When Judas portrayed Jesus, they it was it was told that he was a, uh, a traitor. It was told that he was a thief. So why they put Judas out there? Why they put him on blast? But they don't put nobody else on blast. Why they said Demas forsake Paul? Why they talked about Simon? Why they talked about Ananias? Lying to the Holy Ghost. Well, what did Paul do? It said Ananias lied. It said his wife lied. It said um, uh, uh, Simon the sorcerer. It said that he wanted to purchase to give the Holy Spirit with money. So how come everybody that did wrong, in the, even in the Old and New Testament, it was written what they did. We know exactly what Ananias did. We know exactly what what um, what Simon the sorcerer did. We know exactly what Judas did. We know how Thomas doubted after Jesus Christ rose from the from the grave. We know that he doubted. We know that he lacked faith. We know that they were lacking faith in the four Gospels. We know that Peter cursed. The Bible said Peter cursed in the four Gospels. The Bible said Peter cut the man's ear off. Why was these sins revealed? All from the Old and New Testament. But when we get to Paul in the book of Acts, we get to Peter in the book of Acts, we get to James, John, we didn't hear about none of them talking about sins they committed. We didn't hear Paul saying, I struggle with lust. We didn't hear Paul say, I get angry. We didn't hear Paul say, I'm lazy. But we heard them say that Peter cursed before he had the Holy Spirit and the four gospels. Remember, he didn't get the Spirit to the book of Acts. So we're talking about a fleshly Peter. We're talking about Peter who didn't want to stay awoke and pray. We're talking about James and John trying to call fire down from heaven. And the Lord rebuked him, said, you know what spirit you are of. We didn't see them get rebuked that way in the book of Acts. We didn't see John write about calling fire down on people he was telling you to love another be patient like it was a whole different john because he had the spirit we didn't see peter deny jesus after what happened in the four gospels we didn't see peter curse we didn't see peter carry a sword peter got arrested multiple times in the book of acts we never seen him grab a sword and try to fight people off he had the spirit now he was born again he was transformed so how come all these sins were written about these people from the old and new testament he, uh, David with Bathsheba Killing Uriah Number children of Israel Getting prideful That's three major sins That David committed That was written But what about the believers Who were born again That's what the Holy Spirit In the book of, In, a, in, a, in, a, in a, uh, the New Testament Those who had the Spirit What sin did they commit? What sin did John the Baptist Mom and dad commit? A little Zechariah What sin did John commit That the Bible said? What sin did it say that they commit? Because it talked about sins that everybody else committed. But it didn't mention anything that Paul. Paul didn't never say, I get angry. I lust. I think this man denied his rights to marry. So he definitely wasn't a person who had sexual morality or lust. Or was even affected by making love or fornication. He never married a woman. So what sins they commit? See what I'm saying? Nobody wants to tell the truth. They're looking for lies. The same way the Hebrews likes do it with all their crazy stuff, their antics, it's the same way false Christians do. They look in that Bible to, oh, Paul had a demon. Look what it says. A, a messenger from Satan was given to me, a thorn in my flesh. A thorn was supposed to be persecution, brothers and sisters. It's written in the Old Testament first. It even says in the Old Testament first that. The, the, the people that were thorns in their sides Will be a prick in their, in their side It says that You see So that's what Paul was saying The persecution that he went through He says it He said He said I prayed three times He said that The Lord told me my grace is for you Right 
He said, most gladly will I boast in my infirmities and reproaches, needs, persecution, and distress. For when I'm weak, I'm strong. That was the person, that was the thorn in the flesh. What he had to go through. But they don't want to hear the truth. They don't care. They're not looking for the truth. They're looking to believe in something that gives them comfort while they live in sin. And help shift the delusion. They got to partake in physical things. You know, do this, do that. Because it, it makes them feel, you know, that they are who they're portraying to be. In delusion. Right? Okay, so let's move on. So that's why people don't want to become believers today. Because of the false Christians. But when this last day church is raised up, many of the people that's of the world, people that are known or not known, they're going to come because they need God. They're looking for God, but he's not in these false churches, right? They're looking for help, but they don't see him in these false churches. Okay, so let's read. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all you that labor, and I hear that, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart. You should find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See? Look what Jesus Christ is offering people. They're not offering you that today. That's why they're telling, that's why they're singing these gospel songs, telling you how they're tired of going to church. They don't even believe. It took them a long time to see that you was true. You know, help me believe. You know, I'm all church out. Break every chain. Be free from anxiety. Be free from this. Your husband did you wrong. Your mama did you wrong. This person, they're all worldly. It's the same thing. I seen, look, watch this. I seen, I seen a R&B singer, a woman. I'm not going to say her name. She was, she was talking and she said she had to get away from people before she had to get away from people before she basically could be free. She was like, she said she cut many people off. And like, ever since she done that, she cut many people off, and ever since she done that. So she said she cut many people off. And ever since she done that, she said that like her life has been better, so to speak. That's the same thing these, these false Christians or people are saying. That's the same thing I'm telling you. It's, it was a, it's a celebrity R&B singer, a light-skinned woman. That's all I'm going to say, you know, a light-skinned woman, right? Her last name is, is, is the word Keys. She was on a podcast recently, right? A podcast recently. She spoke and said that she basically had to detach herself from so many people. Right, get rid of the people that was basically like negative energy. That's how they say it, and and those people who don't, you know, kind of connect themselves to the Bible, like the false Christians. They say like negative energy, bad aura, bad omens, stuff like that. Right. So she was saying she had to detach herself. That's the same thing that they're talking about today. They always blame the people. Nobody sees the spiritual side. It, you can listen to me. You can get rid of everybody that's in your circle. But you can't get rid of the demons that's in you without the power of God. It doesn't matter. That's just temporarily. That's what Satan wants you to believe. To keep your focus off of what's going on spiritually. That's why everybody today, most people today are talking about mental health. Because the demons are getting stronger and, and become more bolder. And God is not protecting people as he was before. So a lot now they're saying like mental health, mental, mental, mental health. Right? So... The, 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 the Catholics and the false Christians They'll say Oh the demons, the spirits, the devil Right because they're, they're, they're taking things from the Bible So she was on the podcast And she was saying She basically had to detach herself They make songs about it though Like think about what was the song He was like what's the song the singer said He said that these girls ain't loyal Right You see so it's always something that Satan used to keep you from seeing himself. The biggest trick he ever did make the world believe that he didn't exist. Right? So that's what it's about. He don't want you to see him because you see him, he knows, and you're consciously you're you, you you might turn to God. He doesn't want that to happen. So he's gonna make you believe that everything that's going on with you is because of somebody else. Not because of him, and not because of, you know, 
your choice that you made, right? And you living a righteous, living holy, living unholy, and, and living ungodly. He's not going to show that. He's going to say, you know, everything that's happened because the people that you got to take care of, they leeching off you, they don't care about you, no one really loves you, to try to create you to be more angry. You know, he wants you to grow more in unrighteousness so you can be further away from your conscience. The more your conscience is defiled, the more your conscience is numb, you know, to righteousness, the, the more it'll be harder, the, the more he can grow in you and the more he can, you know, control you and the harder it will be for you to come to God. So that's what it's all about. He wants to play the blame game. He's going to tell you that the person did you wrong because it was them, this and that. You know, they're not going to tell you what you done, the desires you had. Nobody forced you to do what you did, right? And not, so it's always somebody else. But she spoke the same thing, the same thing they be preaching on. Get rid of people in your circle. God going to bless you. You know, I did a teaching yesterday talking about how the guy was talking about, you know, you got to remove your hand. And um, I mean, the day before that, how you got to remove your hand before God can bless you. Like when someone's getting the shock treatment, they come back to life. It's the same thing. They all the same. I'm telling you, you listen to these R&B people talk and their problems. You look at a lot of these celebrities and their problems and relationships. You know, you look at what they go through politics and you look at the false Christian it's the same thing they are ain't no different because they are the same people okay let's move on now when they heard this Acts 2 and 37 now this is how it was when true people came to God when they heard the truth of God's word spoken under the influence of the Holy Spirit with God's grace being there look at how listen look at why they came and look at what happened when they came, right? Look at the difference today. If you go and join a church on Sunday, they're going to say, oh, we got a new member. They're going to, everybody going to shake your hand. Then when you come back next week, you come back the next month, or you come back, that stuff not going to be the same. Ain't nobody going to be all friendly. You might got one or two people that's being nice to you. You know, it's not going to be that same when you join that church or when you came in and was a newcomer or a visitor. It's not the same. Past ain't gonna be your buddy, buddy, buddy. You ain't gonna be always just be up under him. It's not happening. Okay? You're gonna have to join ministries and try to get his attention and different stuff like that. It's not gonna happen. Okay? So let's look at how it happened uh, back in the Bible days in the book of Acts. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked to their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? See that again? Men and brethren. There was no women around. Okay? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. There's no women around at this time that they were addressing. Right? So you see it was always the men. Okay? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for missing your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord God has, um, even, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they gladly received his word, gladly received his word, were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed, were together and had all things in common and they and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need and they continually and they continuing daily with one accord in a temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and sickness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such should be saved you're not seeing it today, brothers and sisters, because the truth is not being preached. And these people are not sent by God. You're not seeing that. You see the need. You see what these people have done when they came to be Christians. Look at all the people that claim to be Christians today. They're praying for more materialistic things. They're praying for wealth. You know, Courtney told me when she used to go to a church, they had went to like a big house and was in the yard. And praying that God will basically bless them Like with the house or with a house or whatever Because I think the church people told them to do that So they went to a house And they was in the front yard Like praying like God give me this Give me this, give me this, you know, bless me with this You know, do you see what I'm saying? Material riches You know, the lust of the flesh The lust of the eyes, the pride of life It's not to be righteous, to be holy, to be like Christ 
right? Is to be what they portray as being like Christ, right? So this is why you see today people are not experiencing what they experience in the book of Acts because they were sent by Jesus and they had the spirit. They don't have the spirit. Many, they, many people don't have the spirit today. 99% don't have the spirit. Okay, 99% don't have the spirit. They claim to be Christians. They are not sent by God. 99% are not sent by God. 99% don't have the spirit of God. 99% are false Christians in our world today, in our world, okay? So look at them. You see all the false Christians, they're, they're, they're always talking about jobs, promotions. They don't even move like they moved in the book of Acts. They still be worried about things. They still be because they don't have the spirit. They don't have the grace. They're not under true spiritual uh, men of God. They're not seeing signs and wonders and miracles like they did. These people experience deliverances. They experience miracles. They experience everything. They sold their goods. They were on one accord daily. You see that? This is way before Paul came into the picture. And you remember Paul wrote in Corinthians not to be divided in chapter 1, verse 10. 1 Corinthians. And you see that the Bible said they were on one accord, right? They went from house to house daily. They were together. They were like-minded. So before Paul even came into the picture, they were already living this way. Paul just repeated these things when he wrote about it. Not to be divided, not to be separated. That's what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. But they were already doing it way before Paul came into the picture. This is way before Paul. You see, we didn't hear about Paul until later on in the book of Acts. So you see, this is the reality, brothers and sisters. This is why the unbelievers don't want to come. The Bible said they had favor with all the people. So you see, people were seeing these things. And they was like, man, look at them together. Look at the unity. Look at the love. Look at how everybody is eating. There's nobody hungry. You got folks who can't even get to church. They ain't even got no car. They ain't got no the fosters. They ain't even got no car. They ain't got no gas. They don't care. You got folks who they saying, give your money and God's going to bless you. Right? And they don't even have food in their pantry. You got these old women giving all their money and can't even pay their bills, but they give it to a church. Some churches don't care. They ain't giving out no money in these churches. They'll do little scholarships, stuff like that, but it's because of what you gave them. See, that's the reality. So they don't care, you see? So they're not experiencing what you see they experience in the book of Acts because the power of God is not in these false churches. 99% they're false, right? They're not experienced. You're not even seeing this today. When people, when people quote unquote become believers today, if you see it on TV or TBN or wherever you see it at on the streets, you don't see people doing these things. They are not selling their possessions. They're not pardoning, giving to every man that has need. They're not continuing daily. They go to church on Sunday, maybe Bible study on Wednesday, and that's it. They are not continuing daily. You don't even see some of the same church members until next Sunday. Because it's false. You see? They were on one accord. They became a community. They became a, a, a little righteous nation. They became a righteous city. They were together. They were living together. They were living amongst each other. They didn't go back to where they were at. They, 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 remember the Bible said the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God suffered bonds and bonds taken by force. Right? So when people seen the power and seen the truth, they, 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 their life was changed. They got faith now. It, to go back into your old life or go back to the way you lived before the truth will, will, will present to you you're going back into the same darkness and the same evil right how are you going to make it into glory right how are you going to receive salvation especially if you don't have the spirit at that time so these people wanted God they're like look I live all my life without God I'm experiencing his power his love his mercy his grace learned that I could, I could be protected learned that I could be healed learned that you know that I could just come to one of the apostles of the elders and they can deliver me and pray for me and all people, I could bring all my kids, my kid got asthma, my kid got this, my cat get that, I got this, get prayed for, and all be well. When they seen that, what are they gonna go back home to? They sold everything they had. They got rid of everything, they lived together. And people took that money and bought like big fields. They had little tents and little houses and little, you know, shelters and shacks, and, you know, they built that little city up, you know, all together. They built it up, right? And they were living in the Christian community. That's why I said they went from house to house daily. You're not seeing it today. You're not seeing people that come to be, that's claiming to be Christians, have this same behavior. This is the blueprint, though. You can't claim to be a Christian and not do what they did. 
You can't even speak this word and not do what they did. That means you're a hypocrite, right? You're a deceiver. You're not genuine. It's not authentic. You have to obey this to the T. That's in anything. It's like when you become a cop, a firefighter, they have rules. They have certain sayings they say, even in the army. They got certain things you got to march and say. Like, you can't say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, um, a U.S. soldier and then don't come to work or don't follow the rules. They're going to court martial you. Like, you can't do that. You can't have no job and not go to work. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you have to obey it. You, people, that, people today that say they become Christians, they are not doing what these people have done. Because they're not true Christians They don't love their neighbor like that They're not selling what they have They love what they have Them expensive cars, that money All them flat screen TVs And their clothes and designer They're not getting rid of that stuff They work hard to get that stuff they worldly But these folks truly came to God And they was up under True men that was sent by God They sold all they had They gave it all over they received deliverance on the site. They received healing on the site. They received miracles and wonders on the site. They received knowledge. They were, they were continuing daily, right? They were being taught in prayers and breaking the bread. They showed them these these apostles showed them how to live holy, righteous, and godly, how to live spiritually, and they continued with them. You read all through the book of Acts. They was together. That's the word, okay? So the unbelievers don't see a need because they're not seeing this as they seen back in the in the New Testament. They're not seeing that today. They're not seeing the unity. They're not seeing the love. They're not seeing the miracles. They're not seeing a need to come. Because the false Christians are the same as them. Y'all got the same medicine. Your kids go to the same school. They got the same problems. You get angry, frustrated, lazy, prideful, gluttony, upset at the, the same way that the unbelievers, the, those who don't claim to be Christians do. So they don't see no need. You're not showing them anything different. There's nothing excited about you. There's nothing that's special about you. You're just like them. You're more close to them than, than you think. The only thing making you think that you're not is delusion and pride. Okay, Acts 5. But a certain man named Ananias with a wife Sapphira, his wife sold a possession, his wife Sapphira sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the lamb? While it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why, how, why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied to man, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down, and gave the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for such, for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. And Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the fear of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then, then fell she down straight away at his feet and yielded the ghost. And the young men came, found her dead, and carrying her, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Listen. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought amongst the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people magnify them. And take note that in uh, Acts 5 verse 13. That means the people that were on the outskirts. The, the word durst, D-U-R-S-T, means there. So they didn't dare join them. After they seen that you could die from lying, and they see that you could die from, you know, lying to the spirit, lying to God, moving about in mischief and deceit, they was like, mm -mm. you know, this is real. I'm, I, I, I still got that stuff inside of me. I'm not joining them. But the Bible said they magnified them. So that means they had a good report. Remember the Bible said, have a good report those without. Because if you're a peacemaker, if you're in love, you, you're, if you have kindness, love, compassion, humility, there's no way that people will look at you in a bad light. So even though the people dropped dead and died, People was fearful. Like, okay, you know, we ain't joining them. You know, we still got stuff inside of us, you know, that we find pleasure in that's unrighteous, that goes against, you know, what God stand for. But they are beautiful people. 
you know, that we, we they're, they're amazing, you know, they're, they're, they're on one accord, they have unity, we see love, they're singing, you know, uh, worship songs, you know, every day, there's no arguing, there's no fighting, so they magnify them, you see, so there's no way that today, if there was two churches here, these Hebrews lights, all these false religions claim that their, their, their God is a true God, all these denominations, all these so-called uh, God-fearing people will be even believing and talking what they're talking if they experience the thing that they experienced back in the book of Acts days. There'll be no confusion. There'll be no, oh, this is the true God. No, this is a true God. No, this is a true God. No, this is this, this Baptist, Methodist. They'll never be doing that. That only is because the power hasn't been here these last thousand years. True men of God hasn't truly been here like that these last thousand years. That priest of truth and the truth. So that's just, this is why they, they, they create these false beliefs. They create these, these I'm a Hebrew of life. I'm a Jehovah Witness. I'm this, I'm that. This is why they do that. Because they're not seeing the power of the truth. God hasn't confirmed these churches. Hasn't confirmed, you know, he's not with these false churches today. A lot of these 99 percent right he's not with them so people are able to come up with stuff because it's not being opposed nobody was playing around when they seen Ananias and sapphire die they wasn't playing around the bible said they was fearful the bible said fear let me read it again look what it said acts, acts uh, 5 verse 11 and great fear came upon the whole church they wasn't playing right and and upon as many as heard these things so not just people that was in the church but people that heard what happened, they was fearful. That's why the Bible said the rest didn't join them when they heard this. So how would people today be walking around talking so loosely as they're talking if they were experiencing the power, living in the power, you know, uh, hearing the power, hearing the word being preached truthfully and seeing the, the, the truth of God's word, they would never be the way they are. It would never, it would be never way. But the reason why it is this way because these false Christians are not sent by God. They don't have the power of God. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They're speaking in demonic chants and everything. They're not true tongues. None of these type of things. So that's why people are not coming. Okay? And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought amongst the people. And they were all of one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest, there's no man draws up to them, but the people magnify them. And the believers, the believers and believers were more added to the Lord. Most who's both men and women. And so much they brought forth the sick into streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter, at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem, round about to Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and then which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed, every one. See, so they seen a need to come, brothers and sisters. Look at the track. Look at, look at, we, we're in Acts 5 now. Y'all yeah, remember we just read in Acts 2. See the track record? How God was continue with them. You see how they were all together still? The young men. Who was these young men? The people that came. In Acts 2. Acts 3. Acts 4. People that came. That stayed. And was part of the ministry. Part of the church. You see how they were all together. Nobody was, was afraid that a, the, a body just dropped dead and died. Because they was being taught the truth. They was being taught the fear of God. They was being taught that when they first came. They was being taught how serious, how dangerous it is. You know, when you say that you're a believer, how dangerous it is to not obey God. He's a jealous God. It's dangerous. So they, why didn't the young men, oh, it's a dead man right here. It's a dead woman right there. Why wasn't the young men afraid? Why wasn't the young men affected? The Bible said they, they came and just rolled them up. You see? Because many things was happening, showing people that this was real. Because it was around the truth. They wasn't shocked at seeing two dead bodies. You notice that, right? Because they had faith and they knew that they lied and they, they did evil and God judged righteously. The same way in the Old Testament, God smote the man who touched the ark and he died. Right? He wasn't supposed to touch it. See? So they knew. They had faith. They wasn't shocked because they know that God's a righteous God. He's a righteous judge. And his ways is just. Okay? 2 Corinthians 6. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with righteousness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what concord has Christ with Belah, and what part has he believed with an infidel, and what agreement has the temple of God with the idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, 
and touch on the unclean thing and I will receive you. You see that? You're supposed to be separate. But you're not, these false Christians are not separate. They, they're thinking they're separate because of their, their, their church buildings, their false church buildings, you know, the way they dress, how they might not curse through certain things like that, but they are the same behind clothes or they hypocrites. The same thing Jesus Christ told the Pharisees and Sadducees. They did all that stuff. To, you see it modern day Pharisees and Sadducees, right? Because both is rejecting the truth. The Pharisees and Sadducees reject the truth. The false Christians, they reject the truth, but they still claim to be children of God. Same way the Pharisees were. Okay? John 16. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not, if I go not away, the comfort will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And he and when he is come, he will reprove the word of sin. And of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. And y'all don't understand why God makes make all these videos. So you can see who truly has the spirit and who doesn't. Okay. Titus 1 and 9 Holding fast the faithful word As he has been taught That he may be able by sound doctrine Both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers They can't do these things They can't exhort and convince gainsayers Because they don't have the spirit That's why these people believe what they want to believe They're not coming, they want to argue and debate Because they, they don't have the spirit in order for God's grace to work through them To convince the gainsayers 1 Timothy 3 This is a true saying If a man desire to offer the bishop He desire a good work a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, diligent, sober, of good behavior, given hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruled for his own house, having children's subjection with all gravity, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how should he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest he withdraw with pride, fall, he fall into condemnation of the devil, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy for the lucre, holding the mystery of the faith and a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved, then let them use the office of the deacon being found blameless. See that? Even so, must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling the children in their own house well. For they have used the office of a deacon, well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. These things write, these things write unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But by tarry long, thou mayest know how thou artest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. They're not doing this today, brothers and sisters. You know how many of these people claim to be bishops and deacons and their household's not in order? Their wives are not even believers. Their wives don't even want to come to church. They argue, debate, and fight. Their kids are not being ruled. And not a, they, they, they completely erase this part. This is not in 99% of churches today. Most of their children are not even in their churches. It's a guy who's a pastor in Clarksville, Tennessee. He has a church. And his son is locked up right now for like multiple crimes. But he claims to be a bishop. You, you see what I'm trying to say? His son is not in order. You just read it. So you see, they just do what they want. This is why people don't want to come. There's no power. God is not confirming them. God is not with them. They're not. I just read this whole thing. It said not a novice. That's a beginner. How many folks say they get saved today and they go preach tomorrow? That's not biblical. You see what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters? John 13 and 55. But this show, but this show, all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one another. See? There's no love today in these false Christianity churches. They're all divided. One is back, Methodist, Pentecostal, Apostolic, this, that, you know, Presbyterian, all this stuff. There's no love. See, he said, by this show, all men know that you are, are my disciples if you love one another. They don't even love other people. These, these false pastors be talking about all type of stuff, you know, especially the ones who, who have the, who has these Facebook um, pages and, and these YouTube channels. They've been talking about all different type of people. There's it, it, guys up here that be talking about Kevin Hart, talking about Kanye West. But this is the funny thing about these people, though. They talk about all the celebrities. These folks, they, they claim to be Christian men. They talk about all these celebrities, about what the celebrities are doing wrong. But why not making videos about their cousins or their uncles or their brothers that's doing things wrong? They got Most people have big families. Most people have a lot of cousins and aunties and uncles 
Why, why are these so-called Facebook preachers, YouTube preachers that have these Facebook pages who don't have churches like that, right? But have hundreds of thousands of followers on Facebook. Why don't they make videos about their mom, their dad, their brothers and sisters who is twerking in a club, who is drinking this, but they make videos about Kanye West. They talk evil about Kevin Hart. They talk evil about all these celebrities. They, these people are not sent from God. God don't want you talking about Kanye and talking about Kevin Hart. He wants you to love them, give them wisdom, right? Pray for them. The Bible says you pray for all men, right? The Bible says the Lord is not slacking his, his, his promise. You know, he wants all men to come to repentance. You sitting here bashing these people, talking bad about them. They don't want, they're not, they not going to receive that. You got to come in love. The Bible said, Jeremiah, love and kindness have I drawn unto me. Love and kindness have I drawn unto me. The Bible said that the Lord had compassion when he looked at the people. Because they were scattered like sheep without a shepherd. They don't know any better. That's what we come in to help them. But you're not a Christian though. So you don't know about that part. See? So you, I'm speaking it, but you don't understand it because you're not a Christian. You're being used by the devil. See, there we go right there. It's always a battle. I want to hear the truth. They don't want the truth to be. See? I rest not against flesh and blood. So, anyway, this is what I was saying. Right? Satan gets mad those days. But listen, it's real, brothers and sisters. Right? He was trying to mess my phone up and everything. But listen, this is what I'm saying to you. These people are not sent by my master. They sent by the devil, the same one trying to mess up this phone, right? Their phone never messes up. He let them say whatever they want to say because it's false doctrine, it's demonic, it's evil, it's wicked, it's going to hurt feelings, right? But my messages always have to go through some type of technical difficulty. And I got all my bars and 5G, right? So these people speak evil, these celebrities, but these are the same people who when an opportunity is presented to them, they will give their all to God and live for him wholeheartedly. But these people don't want them to live for God because they're not living for God. They're delusionally believing what they want to believe and they're just being a bully and attacking these people because that's their nature. See, they don't care about that person. They're not like Paul who said he won't eat or do anything. Oh, my headphone's about to die. They don't care about these people. That's why they're talking about them. They don't care. They just want people to pat them on the back and, and give them points, you know, for seeming like they're, they're being religious and different things like that. Okay? Okay, let's keep moving. Colossians 4 and 6. Let your speech be, with all, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer all men. How you ought to answer every every man. What does it mean to have let your speech be with grace, seasoned with salt? Grace is mercy. Grace is tolerance. Grace is love. If it's saying to always be that way, how do you say things you say? Apologize for saying bad things because you're not spiritual. You're, the, the world apologizes as well. You got people that's in the world, celebrities, everybody they apologize. You know, people shot at people, hurt people, or was it, uh, 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 allegedly? They did things. They apologize. Okay? It's the same. Because both sides are worldly. First Peter 4 and 8. Above all that, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sin. Having displaying passionate intensity. So, fervent charity. You know. Having displaying passionate intensity. It's saying to have that amongst yourselves. You don't, They don't see that today. But this is how it's supposed to be. The false Christians can't do this because they're not true Christians. James 3, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able to burdle his whole body. Behold, we put bits in a horse mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem. Relating that to the tongue. Whosoever the governor listens. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindle. And the tongue is a fire, a war of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that defile the whole body and set it on a fire, set it on fire the course of nature and 
it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and birds and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse we men, which are made as some to God. So you see the false Christians, they'll bless God and then curse men the same way. Out of the same I proceed blessing and curse. My brethren, these are not to, not so to be. Does the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? Who is wise? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. See that? They, they're trying to defend the truth. They're telling you. Don't don't sit there and be saying, oh, it's okay. You know, God said we can rebuke people. You know, I'm just admonishing them. This is the godly anger. You know, I'm just doing what the Bible tells Godly anger. You know, it's okay to yell at people and curse. That's what James is telling you. Look what he says. He says, he said, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. That's what he's telling you. Don't be misquoting scriptures and saying that it's okay to do what you're doing with bitter and envy and strife and, you know, saying mean things. That's what he's saying. You're lying against the truth. That If it just sat there and told you have love and compassion and peace, there's no way you can do these things. If you can't get angry, then how... Are you going to say that you're able to do things in anger? If you can't fornicate, then how are you going to say, oh, it's okay? Because, no, it says it. If it tells you to walk in love and have fervent love, you know, for one another, you know, to, to you know, suffer, you know, persecution, whatever the case may be, then how do you have an opportunity? When did, when Paul was on trial, when did Paul ever say, man, I'm here because of these unbelievers that did me wrong? Paul never complained. Because the Bible say he wrote to do everything without murmuring and disputing. So do you ever see Paul complain? Did Paul ever murmur? You see how powerful it is? See, they say all this stuff about my brothers, but they don't know them. But I know them, though. Right? So, but he says, but the, wisdom that is, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. See? And the fruit, and the fruit righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. See, that's the difference. So you see, unbelievers are not seeing this today. And in false Christians today, they're not doing this because they're not spiritual. They don't have the spirit. They can't do this. You only do this by having the spirit of God. So you see what he said? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle. You're not seeing that today. You're not seeing that him talk, people talking about Kevin Hart on stage shaking it and talking about Kanye West, this and all this. That's not peaceable. That's not pure. That's not with love. That's not with gentleness. Right? They'll hear me say, say well, well, how are we supposed to? You ain't supposed to do nothing because you're not sent by God. This ain't for you. This book was not, this This is not for you, brother. Well, how am I supposed to tell the people? You're not supposed to tell them nothing. You're not a Christian. You're a deceitful worker. You're deceiving yourself. You are do, you're, you're a hearer of the word, not a doer. Deceiving your own self. You have a form of God that's not in the power of. So turn away from him. You're not, this ain't for you. You're not sent by my master. You don't have the spirit of God. You haven't even been taught. You haven't been given revelation to even deal with people. You still looking at the flesh, not realizing the rest of like it's flesh and blood. So it's not for you. The, the, this, the even ask me, what should you do then? You're not supposed to do nothing. You're not, you're not called. This ain't for you. You just chose to claim to be something and know a few scriptures and trying to, you know, use it to 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 fit your life, fit, fit your philosophy of life. You know your the ideology. Your ideology. So it's not for you. That's the reality. So when you gotta ask, when a person asks me, well, how do I post it? You, this ain't for you, brother. You, you're you're an imposter. You're an impersonator. Okay, you, this ain't for you, because the Bible say that God is all the confusion, but of peace. And it says a good man are ordered by the Lord and the life in his way, but you're confused. See, let's let's move on. Whom they set Acts six and six, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed. They lay, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased. And number of disciples multitude, multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. You see that? Were obedient to the faith. 
the disciples multiplied Jerusalem greatly, and great company of the priests were obedient to the faith because of the power. Put them in front of the apostles and laid their hands on them and prayed. See, the Spirit of God. They're not seeing that today. That's why the word of God is not increasing. That's why you see it's all falsehood. Acts 13 and 2. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. You see? And when the Holy Ghost asked for them to be separated, you've seen God working with Paul and with Barnabas. You don't see that today. People going all the way to Africa, places getting kidnapped. They're going player here. There's no power, no miracles, no sign of wonder, no deliverances. There's no nothing. God is not with them. This The, the way that it was happening in the, in the book of Acts is not happening today. They're going on their own. They're claiming whatever they want to claim. And when they get there and things happen, they're like, oh, we're going to pray and trust God. But then they got to wait for it unbelievers to send money for their ransom or they gotta wait for the the embassy to send some u.s soldiers to, to rescue them from their, from from kidnappers but this is come on when has god ever used the world to fight for his people when did god ever use this and that come on brothers and sisters if if we're in god's care he fight for us he sent hell he sent light he opened the ground up like there was come on he blinded the he sent angels on chariots with elijah and they blinded the soldiers and led them all into the enemy territory. Where God swallowed up the, the, the Egyptians in the in the in the um the sea. Okay? So like like this is foolishness. Okay? God is not with them. That's why the Holy Spirit says, Separate me. And you see, when they were separated, what do you read about? The power, how the word increased, how people came, because God was with them. That's not happening today, because these are false churches. Mark 16, 16. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall find that believe. And my name shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was seated up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord worked with them and confirming their word with signs following. Amen. Now look at this. This is way back in the book of Mark. This is in the four Gospels. Did y'all just read? Did y'all just hear me read in Acts 13 about Barnabas? So not only did it say that these sons of found that believe, and that the Lord was working with them, cast out devils and everything, heal the sick, raise the dead. So when the Holy Ghost said, "Separate me, Paul and Barnabas," right? This is years later after Mark 16, verse 16, right? Years later. So not only did God do the same thing with the disciples. Right? In, in 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 Mark 16. He did the same thing with the apostles too, the other men of God who had the spirit. It it, it, it repeated itself, but it's, it's the same truth, it's the same power, it's the same God. Mm -hmm. So you see, it said they self final believe. Paul became a believer years and years later. Right? And the Bible said that the Lord went with them confirming. Right? And they went forth preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming their words with signs following. Did Paul not cast out devils? When the Holy Spirit separated me, Paul, and Barnabas, when they were separated, they went to go preach and teach. Was Paul not casting out demons? Was not handkerchiefs brought to his body? Was Paul not, did Paul not raise a boy from the dead? Did Paul not, uh, uh, was used to heal the sick? Was Paul not used to cast out demons? Of course he was. So the Lord confirmed the same way he confirmed with Peter and them, he confirmed with Paul and Barnabas and them, and with Philip and with Stephen and all other brothers who had the Holy Spirit as well. But that's not happening today because they're not Christians today. See that? Let's move on. Romans 2 and 9. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil. Of the Jew first and also the Gentile. The glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. To the Jew first and also the Gentile. For his respect to person with God. You see, so if people are being taught that they're going to go through tribulation and anguish. You know, for doing evil. Right? It gives them... A fear they're not preaching uh, about sins in church today they're not telling you in Galatians chapter 5 about the works of the flesh they're not telling you that what's going to happen to you they're not telling you that you're going to die and go to hell you know you can't just claim that you can't just wear Jesus peace you can't just claim Jesus you can't live in sin and think you're going to go into heaven you're going to die and go to hell they're not preaching that today they're not preaching the truth they're not telling you that the reason why you're going through all you're going through is because of your sin because of you living against God's word, because of demons being in you, because of living ungodly, living unrighteously, living, and living unholy, not being in compliance to the rules, the commands, 
that your creator has given his 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 creation to follow. That's why you're being attacked. That's why you're angry. That's why you're sick. That's why cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, AIDS, HIV, killings, murders, rapings, molestations, you know, broken hearts, fights, this and that. All is because of sin and because of Satan. They're not being told these things today because they're not true Christians preaching the word to God, right? To, to make the unbelievers be fearful, to make the unbelievers know the reason why the things are in their life is happening is because God is not there and because they're living in sin and because they have demons in them, right? And they're far from God. So they're going to go through being punished and everything because God didn't create them to be unrighteous and to be ungodly and to be unholy and to live that way. They're not teaching them that. So they don't see the need to come. There's no fear. They're only taught things, you know, from false Christianity, right? That says, oh, you know, just claim Jesus, just say it, you know, and that's all you got to do, right? But they're not being taught the truth. A lot of these folks need to hear the truth so they can make their choice, not go to, not die delusionally believing that all is well. That's what happened in Matthew 7, remember? I'm going to say, many going to come say, Lord, Lord, have we not done these things, 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 things? That's all through false Christianity. The Lord said, Department of Unity, you are working iniquity because you can't live in sin and be a Christian, right? That's impossible. The Bible said he calls to be perfect, right? Matthew 11 and 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence take it by force. Right? The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and violence take it by force. That means that when people seen the word, I mean, they heard the word, seen the miracle, seen the power, seen the, the, the glory of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, the grace of God, they came and was, it was wanting to be prayed for, wanting to be healed, wanting everything because their creator has visited them on this earth. So if there's a true living church, a true church that's built up by God, sent by God, the world's going to come. Because so many folks are being tormented, being attacked by demons, spirits. Their mind is, is not as it used to be. Their body's not as it used to be. Demons got more access inside of their brain. Their hearing voices, they're seeing things, they're having dreams. They're being attacked. They're depressed. They're having suicidal thoughts. They're going through so many different things, right? And for the truth to be here, they're going to come. They're gonna come like 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 they come in like like having a riot or a protest to receive from Jesus. That's not happening today, because these churches are not sent by my master. They're not built by my master. They're false. If the true power was here, people would be coming receiving it, and they'll be hearing the word. They'll be receiving rebukes and reproves, because God made this world, and He expects His creation to behave a certain way and live a certain way, and do what He wants them to do. And so He will send forth his servants who have the spirit to speak forth righteousness, to speak forth peace, to make what's crooked straight. That's not happening today, but that's happening through these videos right now. So this is what we have going on today. It's sad, brothers and sisters. It's sad. We have to stand on the truth of God's word. You have to see where your, your loyalty, who your, 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 you got to see if your heart is truly, Paul says, see if you be in faith. God's word or believe in what false Christianity has taught. They can't do anything for you. That's why they tell you the same thing every Sunday. They can't do anything. That's why a lot of them are overweight. They got bad eyesight. They got health problems because God is not with them. They're not examples. They're not leaders. They're not people that you can look up to. They're just ex they're experts. They're, they're experts in making things sound good. They're experts at being liars. They're experts at creating false delusions. They're experts at you know, strengthening your delusion and your sin and your pride. But they can't even, they don't even fast. They don't even, you know, uh, uh, you know, refrain from overeating. They got health issues. They got bad eyesight. They got all type of things going on. The wives are angry. They fight with the wives. The wives are always overweight. Their weight is always fluctuating. Like, God is not helping them. God is a cheerful giver. Right? You know, so why is he not helping these people? Because he's not with them. He's not with them. Sad brothers and sisters, we gotta stand for the truth. We have to. For the name of Jesus, who came and walked this earth, lived and died and rose, we have to stand for the truth.